she can enter my world, watch your clothes. And when I'm through, oh, why not have a go? Sit the time, steady in. You can do it by sure she can enter my world, watch your clothes. And when I'm through, oh, why not have a go? A week, hey, miniature. Hello, it is Shoji from Shoji's Magnificent Minis, and I have lovely husband Mike. Hey, everybody. Be on I'm camp. here somewhere. Yes, there he is, in the corner, yep, right I'm there. In the... <laughs> hey, so I want to say hi to Anne Lamunas and Amberton, 3 Zero Studio, Lone Wolf, 2K1, see who else? I think I saw other folks in here. Art Evolve. Some new followers, you will never know in the chat. Matchstick man, thank you so much for the sub right off the bat. Four months. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yay, sassy Mike. Yes. <laughs> so I'm a little like like not so brightly lit here, but I think that you're gonna be mostly watching painting, so it'll be okay. You're gonna probably get some more lights. As you can see, look at this. I have a new overhead cam. This frees me up. By like so much, Mike switched to the. Oh yeah, you can see it right here. Look at this. You feel this? I'll be able to hold things. Here's Rogaldorn. Dorn. 
be able to see him so much better and I can get so much more um, maneuverability. Now, I'm going to need your help because I need to kind of stay over this squirrel right here so that way you guys will be able to see. We haven't figured out how to flip it so that the, yeah, writing, is, <laughs> the writing is backward. It flipped vertically, but that it actually just... Uh, flipped it reverse. Also mirrored it, so it's now backwards, so oh, we yeah. gotta fix that. I'm working on that, so just... Yeah, you'll be able to still figure out all the painting stuff. Okay, so it is a Logic... No, it's not a Logitech 30. 920. It's, it's a 920 C. That's pretty much the standard for streaming that I think um, people are using. Let's see. How was the class? So I took the class from... Um, Switch back to me. <laughs> um, I took the class from Alfonso Banshi Heraldes. Yes, that's right. And it was amazing. I really, um, so the difference between Alfonso's class and most other miniature painters who teach is that he really teaches more of a fine art observational point of view and that's something you will not get a lot of and it is invaluable to getting really really amazing painting because and Kiro Kenaive he is um also known on cool mini or not as the yellow one he's world famous um for his busts other things and he uses a lot of observational painting as well so I I learned about non-metallic metal I had originally about two years ago taken Alfonso's uh, color theory class and it really was really great for me since I went to fine art school, well to, to fine art training, um, I went to school for fine art, I took a whole semester of color theory so he really was able to squeeze that into a full weekend, what, got it, yay go. look, Serpent Moon Studios, Greybeard Minis. Thank you guys for following me. I hope you're watching right now. I gotta change it in every scene because they. Oh, they can't. Okay, yeah, that's so right. Give they... me a few minutes. To yeah, get that he'll flip it. Everybody. He'll flip it. Anyway. They can't. They're yeah. Yes. Right, which... So dumb as I get it all fixed. So <laughs> hopefully it'll look better in this minute. So anyway, um, the class that I took was a lot like a refresher for me of my college class. Um, all crammed into a weekend, which was amazing that he can do that get so much um material and information in that one weekend and um it really is game changing i think i've been using that kind of color theory what's awesome about it is that he's taking the color theory that i learned in college applying it to miniatures and that's what i really needed so same thing here he took non-metallic metal um as a theory and basically put it into a, a weekend class um, that was really great and so I highly recommend it now one thing about Alfonso is that we don't we don't reteach his stuff now if it comes out because I'm showing you you know how I paint something um, I don't it's not gonna be the same as learning it from the master you got to take his class you also learn about the special hashtag that um, he knows only us, only the people in his Chicago class know about party particles. So find out what that's all about by taking. <laughs> but when Potter Maker may want to zoom in the overhead cam, yeah, it's well, a bit. Yeah, we'll yeah. get all that taken care of. Once she starts painting, once I start painting, this is the first time using this setup, so we'll be tweaking it as she goes. Yeah, how did I? See things better. How did I learn of the course? Um, so I'm friends with Anth Anthony Wang. And he is the one who organizes the class, has people on a waiting list. So if you want, if you're interested in those kinds of workshops, about once a year, he gets people from Europe and Russia to come in. Um, basically, send me a whisper and I will let Anthony know that you're interested, especially if you live in the Chicagoland area. Now, also, if you happen to live in the Denver area let me know as well because I am well connected with the people who organize in Denver I actually fly to Denver because my uncle lives there when there's a teacher in that area that I'm interested in so see, yeah just um, 
those kinds of courses are not not cheap because we're basically paying for the flight and everything for one of the Europeans to come out. So um, that's another reason why it doesn't tend to go out to the general audience because it's expensive. It's a master class. Banshee uploaded the Saturday class to his Facebook page. Oh, good. Yeah. Was that the video? It was probably some of the video. I think he took the whole class. So, yeah, you regret not going to a seminar in the UK not long ago? If So, yeah, I would take um, classes from anybody you can in the UK because there's not a lot of teachers there, right? Andy Wardle is actually one of Alfonso's teacher, or students. Um, I've heard really good things about him, and I would like to learn from him as well. Do I recommend that you try to get into next year's year? Yes, I absolutely do. So I wouldn't take a class from somebody I didn't, especially the second time. This is the second time I've taken his class. Like I said, it's pretty expensive, but I would not, because my I have a business. This is not for funsies. So all of my classes that I take from other artists have to make sense from a business point of view. And so if I'm willing to spend, I think it was $350, to take his weekend class, then it's worth it. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what I think. And if you uh, if you're serious about leveling things up, he's a good one. A good one. The other good one that I really really recommend is Julio Cabos, and also Kiro Kanaev. Um, and the other those are, those are the people that I've taken weekend workshops from. So I I really 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 like. All three of them. I'm, I definitely think all worth your money. Andy Wardle is a good teacher. You enjoyed his skin painting class? Yeah, I really would. I would be pretty chuffed to be able to take his classes. Um, all right, let's go. So let's start painting. I want to show you something first. Look at what I'm doing here. I'm. Let's go back to palette cam. There we go. Look, I've got my Redgrass Games palette. I unfortunately don't have their special membrane, so. We'll see how this holds up. Insane in the membrane. Yeah. Um, I do have information though. I am now sponsored by Redgrass Games. So that means if you're taking any of my classes at Marcon or Nova or at Gen Con, um, you'll be able to use the Redgrass Games palettes because I will be I will have them. Maybe not at Marcon. We'll see when they get them to me. Marcon's coming up really soon, so make sure that if you live in the Columbus area, sign up for those classes. You know Michael Land Pizarski? I do. I don't know when he's going to teach us an MM class at the UK, in the UK, but he looks to me like a really good teacher. A lot of the other really big name Europeans are taking his class, so looks good. Hi, McKay's Fire. These are not out yet. They're just starting to be sent out, I think, soon. This is the prototype they sent me. So, so don't get, yeah, don't get too, too excited. It's it's coming, though. But let me show you what else. Look. You guys see that? Red Grass Games. They are serious about sponsoring. They sent me two of their brushes they're trying out. So these are prototype brushes. That means they're they're not quite ready, but we'll see if they are all set and we're going to do a review of them tonight. So I'm hoping, look at how beautiful that I love the length of the bristles. This is a double zero and this is a two. So probably a detail brush and then standard. I love how long these are. Seems like they, I just got it. So whenever you get a brand new brush, don't break, like don't bend it, get it wet and then loosen up the glue because you're going to mess up your bristles and break it before. Okay, same thing. See how this is? It's got glue on it, so I'm going to get it wet. And now it's ready. Wonder why Moy Lasta thinks Twitter target audience? No idea what you mean, Slave 1D. This is in October. Okay, so here's my my information for my Forge, the Horus Heresy Forge World Rogaldorn. 
and I've been working a little bit on bringing up the highlights on my gold. See, I got a nice bright highlight down here. And I've got, so can you see on this, I mixed, uh, what was West. Okay. Paint while you do that. So I've got brown leather and I mix that with a little bit of I use. Oh, is some sort Deep of ad that played before? Oh, okay, that makes sense. I didn't get that. I forget that I have ads because I have Twitch Prime, so I don't get my I don't get ads at all. Deep blue. Brown leather. We're gonna mix these two up. Pull back those up again. Don't worry. Right. That can you? That? Yeah. Not sure if I saw, but the new scale seventy five Kickstarter went live. I I don't think I did actually. I'll have to check that out. Right. I'm gonna put, so there's not much brown left. I've got, oh good, I've got plenty there. I'm putting both of these colors, I gotta shake them up. And everything. I am. Put these two colors next to each other on the palette because they're gonna get mixed together. Got Leanne just subscribed. Four months in a row Four at months three. in a row, thank you so much, Kat. All right, Kat. Um, I got everything I need to cast the badge. We're doing a really cool base for Kat's commission. And she's going to um, gonna make a mold for me and I'm gonna cast her lease badge. Really cool. Okay, so my goal here, I'm looking at it, is to make a dark brown. That's about right, right about that. That's my base color. For all the gold. Welcome back, Nilsson. Hold it right here, and you guys can see just fine, can't you? Yeah. Okay. You have lots of space to paint. I have all this room for activities. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it's kind of like my thing. Oh, it's my thing too. I heard it. No, you didn't. Let's be honest. No, you didn't. Yeah. You didn't I... start saying it till I started saying it. No. Fighting now, Cam. <laughs> so I don't know if. I've told you this, or if my sister told you this, but Wyatt has uh, started taking, you know how he's a NASCAR fan? I mean, he's 10 years old. Okay. But he's been basically now determining which race car drivers from which year are which Star Wars characters. Oh my goodness. So 1968, Glenn Allen is Uncle Owen. 1948, Sarah Christian is Aunt Beru. Oh my gosh. 1998, Bill Elliott is R2-D2. I mean, and he... That's kind of weird. I mean... He, well, he's pretty obsessive about NASCAR, but he's starting to get obsessed about Star Wars, which I think yeah. is cool. Um, so, yeah. Um. So, how do I say that name again? N1SL... Like... Nilsson. Nilsson... Nilsson, XD. XD from Brazil, and I think I say Oya. Is that right for for Portuguese for hello, Oya? Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I had I met a boy. I see. I substitute teach during the day, and I met a boy, and he was from Port. He was from Brazil, and he taught me that today. <laughs> the um. Mathis, hello. I'm doing really well. Getting all my true metallic metal down for my Rogaldorn figure here. Mission. Well, it's so weird because I don't have to put keep it down here anymore because the camera's not up in my face. It's I can, not in your way. It's not my way. Thank you so much for that cheer, Amber. Did. So nice. Yay. Catlian got the mold. She's gonna make it tonight. Awesome. Right. I got everything I need to cast the cast the mold. So all you have to do is send me the mold and we're set. Okay. There we go. Now I'm gonna set that aside. See, I'm making sure that all these little white specks 
a covered. Yay. <laughs> Did I say it right? Um, Nilsonics, is that right, Mike? Nilsonics? That's it? Nilsen XD. Nilsen XD, there we go. Try. Getting all the little specks covered. I wanna show you something. Okay, so this is something I learned from Julio Cabos' class. This is um, that floral foam that you can get at any kind of floral shop or um, a craft store that, you know, I can stick these dowels in here. The whole project is really nice and contained. So I can take this out now. Paint this, same color. So the Kickstarter thing is the book. Oh, you want, is there a new book they have out? I need to see this Kickstarter. It's for a uh, U-boat. Oh, for it's a U-boat, okay. Thanks for the bits, Amber Dawn. Yes. The parts of the gold here, gold jetpack thing or whatever backpack it is. I know it's not a jackpack, but. A jackpack. A jackpack? Not quite. What did it, what does everybody else do this weekend? Anything cool? Anybody paint anything good? Oh, I see a little fuzzy stuff down there. Grab them with, grab it with my tweezers. Not cat hair, but it's I think it's like a little wrap of oh, paint that timer. I like scale 75 because they're so nice and opaque. Keep it over my spiral. When um, Mike's not here, that's going to be the trickiest part, I believe. Freddy Wolf is working on his Nova Open. Oh, don't tell me because I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm judging, but if I am, I don't want to know what you're working on just in case I have some kind of biased. I don't want to be, I'm, I'm kind of liking, so there's a little bit of hairs coming, you know, I'm coming out, but overall I think they hold paint pretty well. Definitely good for basing so far. Might have to, might have to go to the detail brush for some, for the fine detail, we'll see. I don't have any complaints so far. And I'm really picky about brushes too. I will will not give a good review just because somebody is sponsoring me. I will tell you guys the truth. So if I, I mean, and these are prototypes, so you know we'll give her some feedback. Let let Greta Grass Games know what we think. Hey, Grelix. Grelix, hello. Good e evening. Amber Down wants to know if you've tried the color shift paints from Green Stuff. I have not, and I'll tell you why. Because I already have some paints, and I think they're already in my show she recommends on my profile. And they're called, here, I'll show you where they are. Ah! Um. With me while I dig these paints out. There it is, there's one. So the paints that I have are Lumiere by Jacquard, and I have a whole bunch of colored metallics by this brand and you can get like 10 for like $13 on Amazon. Go to my go to my page, um, my profile page and you'll be able to see them because I've got them on there. There's a there's like a jewel tones set and there is a another set. Hold on, let me see if I can find one of the cooler paints. I'm going to take my mic off one second. 
know what mic off means. It means mic on. She's going to give me a really hard time. But she doesn't have the microphone. They can't. So I guess we'll see what happens when she comes back on the mic. She'll give me all sorts of a hard time, I'm sure. What are we waiting for, Chris? Microphone. Yeah, that's not good. Jack the kid. Yep. Okay. So here's these are the opaque. These are by Lumiere. These are so this is Lumiere by Jacquard, and this is Neopaque by Jacquard. So the the Lumiere ones, these are the ones that are very similar. Let me shake this. These are very similar. Let me swatch this for you. Ooh, look at how pretty. Very similar to the Green Stuff World. They, the other, some of the other colors shift. This one just is a beautiful. Look at how beautiful. Pretty. And. I, that's why I haven't bought the Green Stuff World ones, because I really like these. And I have a lot of dang paint. So look at that. Beautiful this copper. Very true how much. Yeah. A I don't lot. I really don't need more paint. The one line of paint that I will probably be getting is Secret Weapon. Because those are really good as well. And I don't have any. And they offered to help sponsor me as well. Nice. That'd be yeah. pretty good if they did that. Yes. So that means two. Okay. So that's not. So if I could have perfect world, I might make these just a smidge shorter. I think. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're fine. Uh, we'll let's paint some more with them and see. Baby poop wash. Yeah, that's that's a scale. That's a um, sorry. Secret weapon. That secret weapon makes that. Am like I, wait, that's the actual name of it. Baby poop wash. It is. Actually, that's I do fabulous. have a lot of their washes. I just don't have any of their new paint. They have a new light of paints, and I don't have those. And I want those. All right, we're almost done covering. Poop. You just want to say poop, don't you? Poop. <laughs> Played with Secret Weapon Washes last week. You really enjoyed them. Good range. Yeah, see, I told you they have them on Amazon UK. Are they more expensive or are they pretty decently priced? Okay. Uh, we're all set. Okay, so this is what I love about this little foam. You just put it back in here. Grab the next thing. It's gonna be just the really important part of this step is getting full coverage. You don't want those little white spots because it'll really mess up your effect with your true metals. How's the wet palette working? This wet palette is awesome. And here's the thing. This is just the prototype. What I like about the company, Redgrass Games, is that they constantly upgrading and tweaking because they're trying to always improve their product. And uh, I, I like that about the company. I feel like that's, that's the kind of company I'm interested in, in, uh, in sponsoring, for them sponsoring me, representing. That's the right word. Okay, so this is where I just used a little bit more of that new it's a what's it called where is it deep blue it's very similar to deep sea blue <laughs> they just took the word sea out but yeah that's that's very similar to deep sea blue I'm gonna color all of the things that are supposed to be quote unquote teal with more deep the deep blue here all of your little propellers and stuff Shell's blood, us and gore. Use that paint. Yeah, yeah. He, um, yeah. Actually, she does have um those paints in her class. 
And she's actually one of the people who helped talk me into um, going ahead and trying more of the secret weapon stuff. That is the goal. Her and Brian Stilts. Stilts? They both said that I need to program. Okay. Sure I've got everything. Oh, spots back here. There's little canisters. Now you can see that I'm not being super duper careful, and that's okay because most of this is going to get brushed brushed on by the gold. Okay. Good. Now, we, as I showed you last week, what we did, we took a base brush like this, a Citadel base brush. It's got a rounded end. And I'm going to use Victorian Brass on my palette. And we're going to basically dry brush. And don't ever, like I said before, don't ever let anybody tell you that dry brushing is not valid because I'll show you there's a specific way to use it that it looks good. So, getting it on my brush. Then I'm going to wipe it off here. So see how there's not much paint. Now I'm going to brush it down as if it were the light. So that way I keep all my little shadows. Keep it in one direction. Right? You know, kind of a like a round polishing motion. to wipe it off because you don't want to get too much and you don't want too little either. Put it up here. There we go. Down cam. A lot harder now. It is harder. I would think that it wouldn't be, but it's easier for me to see, but it is harder. What color is that again? This is Victorian Brass. Gale 75 92. It's just a very kind of goldy like warm color but it's darker it's a little bit darker than a straight up gold because we want that's our quote unquote first metal coat the camera's very lacy look at this yeah he's like don't taking the whole table which every camera is attached to so i can't that's why the whole camera we're not having an earthquake here in central Illinois. That is that better? Much yeah. much harder for me. I know. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make it hard for you. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> not what I meant. Oh. Hey, hey, Super Sarah. Yeah. Sarah, how's it going? I could have swore you saw them advertise it had a rubber steel thing. the production for the wet palette oh the yes discussion. this is the prototype it does not have that like i said they they have been adding improvements since i got this prototype that definitely is a, the seal is one of them and there's other there's other improvements that like the wavy I'm really excited about they they did some improvements to that as well they really listened to their kickstarter people and the people who they sent prototypes out and like I said that is a that is a really good sign they're gonna keep improving it even once the Kickstarter is over they're gonna keep improving Freddy Wolf wants to know if you're going to post any more pictures from the class I do I have some more thank you for reminding me I do have um, like a whole day's worth of class pictures to post so that's my first first step now would you guys rather me show you like the whole process on just this shoulder pad or do you want to see me how the process of doing this entire commission is? Because if I were doing this entire commission, I would go through each step and do the whole arm now. And then I would do like all of these pieces. I would then same dry brush step. What do you guys want? Everybody wants to help Super Sarah do her grocery shop. 
So, <laughs> do I think they'll be shipping the pallets soon? I not tell you because I don't know. That's the thing, RD, well, or sorry, Amberden, is that just because I'm sponsored, it doesn't mean I'm like in direct connection constantly with companies. Um, you guys get about as much information as I do, and sometimes. So. <laughs> Tim Fizz says they, to do the shoulder pad. Shoulders are the most important part of a Space Marine, anyway. Okay, and then other people were saying the whole thing. Bang. The whole thing. Bang. <laughs> got the she look. Give me the look. Yeah. I got right. the look. So I'm brushing it. Oh no, did you drag my paper towel through my paint? Burp. Yeah. Yeah. I I understand. I empathize. First. Uh, which <laughs> wet palette is it from the starter? It's the... This is the basic... I think it's the small palette. It's not the studio palette. And I'm, I did back them for the studio palette, so I will be getting that as well. So we'll be able to review that on the, on the channel. I'm really excited when... I'm really excited for everything to come. Lasting, yes, Everlasting Wet Palette by Redgrass Games. See how if we do a circular polishing motion, we don't end up covering those Roman numerals and all the detail work because it just kind of glides over the, the edges. That's good. You want good detail on your... Yes. What? Everybody keeps telling Super what watching this. Okay. Oh, one of the things you should look for, Sarah, is um, Alfonso actually found these Super Target. And they were um, little snack packs of pickled snap peas. They were really good. I recommend. So, sorry, same thing with the polishing. Looks like the uh, pallets be shipping a very um, soon. If you yeah. pre-order, yeah, Kickstarter should I imagine come earlier, but oh, pre-order the pallet too. Nice. Yeah, I imagine that. The, I think I just saw that they they are starting to ship the pallets. Elite. They starts on Tuesday. Ugh, or I Monday. See that? No. Not ready. Well, I'm ready for summer, but I immediately think about how quickly summer will be May over. May is almost like... almost the end of spring, though. It's like I'm not ready for summer yet. I feel like we barely got spring. Yeah. It was like winter, 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 winter. One month of spring. Honey Python. Winter, yeah. winter skipped spring and went straight on to summer. Okay. Is. Still doing our brushing. Especially any spot that. So this can be on top. Make sure. Brush that. Don't brush this as much because you're going to need less. That's going to be covering stuff. So there's not going to be light. For Sarah's Kingdom Death arrived yesterday. Started she started painting the white line. Yeah, nice. Speaking of white line, I have a commission of a white line that I need to finish. Okay, so this is I'm gonna be a little bit more careful over here. There's some little filigree over here. Get it. You guys can see that okay, hopefully. Ooh, too much. It's okay though, because it's on top, but you don't want too much. So I want to show you something. When you get that kind of raggedy look, that means you need to brush a little faster, uh, polish it a little bit more, because you don't want it to look dry brushed. You want it to look polished. So you might need a couple layers of the brushing. Okay, 
pretty. We can always deep deepen these shadows. That's nice. A lot. Effect in regulation. I nine. Don't mean to hijack the chat, but quick on N. L seventy five. Master series. Master series. Master series. Okay, so Slave 1D, they are very similar. Um, I like them both a lot. I think that, so I don't know if you know this, but Reaper Master Series is made with a white base that is actually um, Erwin Williams house paint. And so they're, um, they're, they're factory or whatever in Denton, Texas, and I got to see it made. Now that means that it's super durable, um, but it, all of it is a little bit desaturated because of the white. Whereas scale 75 is gonna be a lot more pigmented because they don't have that white base. So, you know, it kind of depends on what you're looking for. And price wise, I would say that Reaper Master Series can be a little less, but with my 15% off coupon code, Yoshi Rocks, you can get um, those uh, scale 75 at a good price point, especially since um, if you buy the whole set, you're gonna get the best value per dollar. Is that the right way to say that? Best value per dollar? So I recommend scale 75. But I also think that uh, reapers, reapers are good as well. And you just, one thing about scale 75 is a smaller line. You need obviously less paints to be able to fill things out. And they really just work really well together. Like they are all formulated to work together. The audio keeps dropping for Yes, because you've got the mic on. Oh. Partly too that you're bending over, sitting up, bending over, sitting. So hard to keep the audio. I've turned your volume up, so hopefully it stops cutting out. Okay, I've, I apologize. I turned up the volume on her mic, so yeah. I mean, it'll kick in sooner. I need to adjust the sound gates and stuff better. Okay, I want to show you guys. I'm mixing. Mixing this blue and brown together a little bit more. It's kind of like a gray kind of color. And I'm going back in and I'm picking out some of my shadows that got lost. And you're probably wondering why, if you're doing true metallic, why is using a non-metallic paint for shadows? That is because when you have a metallic, there's a lot of darkness on a metallic to help give you contrast. And honestly, it doesn't reflect. It doesn't reflect. So you're going to want a flat paint to be able to get that. You're going to use both of them. I also adjusted the uh, noise gate, so hopefully it sounds a little bit better now so that it should kick in yeah. a little bit earlier. Hopefully this won't be an issue. Um, when I stream on my own. Okay. I'm just going in here real quick and I'm picking out some of the highlights that were a little bit covered by the flat paint. Let's... I'm gonna go back over here to Rogaldorn because look at this, his whole area over here. I need to use the dry brush. Stop using this paint. That was awesome. Awesome. I'm glad that you... No, don't feel... If you're going to ask me a legit question, um, it's okay to um, hijack. The only time I don't like what, when people hijack is when they are self-promoting or, you know, promoting something that I did not give the okay for. Like, like their own Kickstarter or, you know, something like that. But... Getting asking for advice on paint is perfectly fine. 
you don't think about using non-metallic to shadow metallic. Yeah, it actually, I mean, this is what this whole thing is back here. It works really nice. All right, so this part up here is also gold. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, instead of shaking the camera, I'm shaking. Okay, all of this here, I'm gonna get some gold. And it's filigree, so I'm going over it carefully so that I pick up pick up that gold, but I don't want to, there we go. Don't want to lose too much, and I want to make sure to get my edges on that as well. There we go. Thanks, Artie Wolf. Yeah, that looks nice. Deacon, you might have to check your Twitch follow for Shoshi to make sure that you've got set with notifications on. Yeah. Muna says the audio is much better. So Yay, good. I'm so glad right to hear tweak. that. Good. All right, we're getting the golds much better here. Trying to find the little spots on the tops that need a highlight. All right, I want to see, I want to check something. This guy's hand, we probably can glue this hand onto this arm soon. Let's do that now. I subassembled quite a bit. So that's what's in one thing that's really nice about these little dowels is you can just take it right off and don't have to worry too much. Get a little file, rough that up. And you see how nicely Forge World has made this? So it should fit right in there perfectly. Okay, well, I gotta take a peek. Glasses off. Glasses off. Okay, good. I think it's gonna work. Now we get the glue. A little bit in here. Super Sarah says there's no peas, but found a snack-sized pickle pack. Yummy. Snack-sized pickle pack. How did Tim Fizz wants to know how you attach pieces to the bowels? Just super glue. Just that. And then maybe a little squitch of the... Squitch? Squitch. Squirt squitch of Instaset, which is... Uh... There we go. So that is his hand. Hello, guys. Down. Hello. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take this one off. Oop. And I think roughing it up does help the um, the glue set nice because it gives it a little extra tooth. Where did I? I don't have my glasses on. Now I can't find my file. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> And we are going to, ooh, you know what? I don't want to put this on yet. I don't think. Let's just dry fit it. Always dry fit. So the reason why we're not wanting to put this on just yet is because we have all this belt to do first. So I'm going to take some metallics. We've got this one, Gamer Silver. I need a like a metallic black first. This is good. This is black metal. It's not wearing a headset, Amberdon. It's a lab that's clipped to her, the collar on her shirt. Why? Huh? What's the question? Just Amberdon asking about me clipping the mic to your headset. Don't wear a headset. Nope. And it's actually, it wouldn't work anyway. Yeah, so here's the black metal. And I need to take my hat. Black metal here, dry brushing inside. These little coils. And again, it's okay if you don't get every single little detail because it's sitting in shadow and you're not mostly not going to see a lot of it. Okay, now I need to look at his firearm and it's I'm gonna go ahead and make it highlighted with the black metal. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. 
And I think that that should look pretty good with the black metal on it. We can give it a wash to make it darker because I do think it's going to need that. All right, and then all of the pieces, like the backs of his legs, see? Back of this belt. These little hoses. And again, if, it, if you're not perfect, it's okay. Some of the shoulder pads and things are gonna get covered. There's a little bit of silver right there. Let me know if anybody's saying anything, Mike. Nope. Nope, okay, they're in triumph. Oh, actually, Super Sarah did say that the pickle pack is too rich for her blood. Oh, is it? It's too expensive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What's a pickle pack? So it's like a little snack pack of pickles. Peter Piper pecked a peck of, what is it? Pickle Peter pack. Piper picked a, pe a peck of pickled peppers. In a pickle pack. Yeah. All right, watch this. We're just gonna hit the highlights of off screen. Oh, here we go. Is that better? Now this is the dark. Metallic black here, so. We'll go back and highlight the rest with the little silver. all the little propellers and steely boppers in here. Black metal. Black metal. Artie Wolf says, is it me or did you magnetize the jetpack? I did not. Did not what? Did not ma magnetize it. I did not. I did not. I did not magnetize the backpack. Not. <laughs> All right. A little bit more right here. Everybody can see that good. I'm gonna check my reference and oh, the saw blades. These actually, based on this, look a little bit more in the blue end. But this is gonna work just fine right here. So this holds holds pretty good point. I'm pretty pretty impressed so far. I'm really curious. I don't know what the price point of these brushes is just yet. So that's that I should ask them. It's gonna make a difference. Alright, let's check. All of this up here is gonna be in the silver tone. All right. Yay. We got another subscription. Three months from Teveston. Woohoo! Teveston, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. All right. Now, I'm going to just do a little bit of this blue, water it down so I get kind of a wash just to kind of go over little bits that got a little too highlighted now we're gonna do the special silver this so I love game air, air silver and and I have to say scale 75 silver is nice too but I usually this is my default because um it works so nice look at this it is like a liquid silver I'm gonna pull my palette down here can you see this it looks like mercury on my palette I'm not gonna use the metallics with my new brush because I don't want to get any in the ferrule. I'm going to get out an older brush. 
This is a Winsor Newton number one. It's not, it's, it's still, this one's kind of old, so when I use metallics, if it goes up in the ferrule, it's not gonna ruin it because it's already old. And I'm just gonna hit, hit highlights on my metal so they come nice and bright. That looks really nice. Rogel Dorn is very shiny. He's a very shiny character. Must be the way the attachment point looks, yeah. Black metal. Janitor John, thank you so much for the subscribe. Four months in a row. That is awesome. Excellent. <laughs> Such a I'm tired. I know. It's been a long week. It's been a long, it has it's been. It's been a long, like, month. It has been very busy. Who decided to buy a house anyway? Uh, me. <laughs> I, I definitely did. Yes. Okay. So we're hitting all the egg edges again. Now, only on the top and only in a small, like this, are we doing the highlight. Look at that, how it goes bing. Very small. Nobody uses bing. In the middle. Emmerdon says, thinking of signing up for a 2019 Adepticon tour run by Geek, Geek Nations Tours. Does anyone know anything about them? I I've don't, never heard of yeah, them. Yeah, I don't know anything about Geek Nations, but um, it sounds like fun. They they do all these tours. I would, uh, I always give um, tours to my international friends, Emmerdon, so, you know, you might want to save your money and go with us because it will be a lot less expensive. I'll give a little walking tour to my my international friends of, of downtown Chicago. Okay, I'm just barely hitting the highlights with the edge of this brush. Because I really want this gun to kind of read as as black as much as possible. And if I put too much silver on it, it's not gonna read correct. Okay, so watch, watch this here. We've got our black metal on here already. And just in the center, in a small area down the middle, I'm doing my my, this is my quote unquote white highlight that I'm using with the silver. It's not really white, but it's, it's your contrasting highlight. See? Another one right here. There we go. A little bit back here. Okay. That guy is almost done as far as the metal. Let's see. Let's go back to here. Gotta go back to this blue over here. And a little bit here, this wrist piece and the thumbs. Having this blue contrast is kind of important. There we go. All of that gets to be blue. And we'll go back over that with silver after the fact, after that dries. I did get some gold down in here. I need to cover that up. A little bit too much. There we go. Lone Wolf says that Geek Nation seems fun and you get some exclusives, but you basically put yourself on a fully guided tour. 
Oh, okay. Edifo, hello. Edifo. So uh, Edifo took the Denver, actually he's the organizer for the Denver class for Alfonso. And Edifo, what do you think? People were asking me if I thought that it was worth it and if they should take the class when he teaches, when Alfonso teaches in the UK. And I said, absolutely, you should definitely do that. Okay. Now, I feel like this, again, needs more contrast. So what I want to do, I'm going to get some Agrax or shade right here. And I've got my dry palette right here that I'm going to put it in because I don't want to put it on my wet palette. So I don't know if you can see this. This is not Redgrass Games' sheet. This is just baking parchment. And it, this is how bagement, baking parchment acts. If this were Redgrass Games' sheet, it would be totally flat and still completely wet. Like it's really is ever asking. Edifo says worth every penny. See? Yeah, that's, that's how I feel too. All right, we're gonna go in here with a little uh, Agrax to get our contrast. And you know what I may do actually after I do Agrax is go back with a little purple Drucci Violet and see what happens because that may actually be a better contrast for gold. We'll see. Yeah, let's try it on the other one. We'll, we'll do an experiment. Find, the, find my Drucci Violet. Here it is. Well, no. Violet, it's Piggy, Piggy Purple Ink by P3, so we can try this instead. It's gonna hopefully give us a similar effect. Artie Wolf says it was still cool that Banshee answered him when I when he asked how long it took to paint the bust from the first day that you were there. Yeah, he's really good at answering. Um, if you send him an email, he will answer you. It might take him a while, but he's, he's he really is passionate about his wanting to share and build up the community and build up the uh, build the hobby, you know, to improve it. Okay, so that's the purple, and I'm not sure if I like it, but it's definitely got some contrast. I want to get go back to my Agrax. Okay, now this is what we're gonna do for the real contrast. Now we've got this is Lumiere by Jacquard, the metallic gold six five six one. Look at how bright this is. It's pretty pigmented as well. See that? I like it. Ifo says that Alfonso teaches you, does not teach you step by step, teaches theory, so rather than giving you a fish, he teaches you how to fish. Yeah, he teaches you the why. Because once you know the why, you can choose the how. Because you'll know how to do something in many ways. Because there's not just one way. And that's, that's the other thing. You guys have seen me do something. You'll be like, why are you using the wet palette now instead of the dry palette? And I'll tell you guys, part of the reason why I do it is I want to show you there isn't, there isn't just one way. Try different things, experiment. Get out of your bubble. Everybody has a bubble, everybody. Bubble boy. <laughs> Okay. See how beautiful that gold is? Overwatch Pro 2000. Thank you so much for following. I hope that I hope that you enjoy watching this stream cuz I I don't play Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it played though. It looks pretty dang cool. Bottom line is you will level up from this class. I do agree about that. Absolutely. Can you see how I'm hitting this as if it's sunlight on the tops? No, I don't want the sound effects. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. These little scroll parts up here, I want to make sure in the center.
Boom. How gold is that? It looks like real gold, doesn't it? And there we go. That's a bit, a bit better. Now make sure to hit these little rivets with your gold too. Now on the back, same thing. Sort of a, not a polishing as much as it's a layering. But you're still kind of brushing it over the surface. And make sure to hit those little, little spots that have the um, scroll work. There's like a bunch of scroll work on this. All right. Edifo says to do the color theory first and then do non-metallic metal. Yes. I think that also you also need a, a strong, um, strong background in blending. Also with the non-metallics, it really kind of helps to already, already know how to blend. I'm wondering if you should cancel and keep waiting for a class with Carlos Royo. I, I don't know. I've never taken his class, so I couldn't tell you. Okay, check out this. I'm going to brush it up. I can catch those little ends. And again, there's, there's more little detail work down here, and there's a lightning bolt. You see the, the motion of the brush is incredibly important. I'm just feathering it over over the over the details. That's one thing that's so nice about Forge World is you it seems like you have to be like a super great painter to paint these. But you can get a really be beautiful figure with with just minimum skill if you're careful with your brush strokes. See you soon, Super Sarah, if you're coming back. If not, have a nice evening. Yeah. Thanks so much for stopping by, Super Sarah. Okay. So here's a quick close-up. Here we go. It's going to be meat. Wait. It's going to be meat, yo, see what Shoshi's Minis picks up. Need to see what Shoshi's Minis picks up when she takes his ambience class at Nova. That's true. I mean, every time I take something from him, I'm going to improve. That's for sure. Am I taking his ambience class or am I taking Roman's? I know somebody's. I think it might be Banshee's, but I'm not 100%. Oh, I, I don't know. Okay, there's a little spot on his thumb right there that I missed. There we go. Buzz ball, found one. And I don't have to highlight underneath as much. Give it a quick little shine and edge highlight. Boom, boom, boom. Here's the elbow. and then a shine on the top. That should be good. Oh, it's Banshees, okay. Good, I'm glad. Like I said, either one of those guys can teach a really good ambi ambience class. Okay, this is the silver. We're going up on the tops of this gold to bring it up one more level. Gonna make it really shine. I'm just doing it on spots that are going to be really gold and then I'm gonna go back over it with gold to get a really high polished gold look.
Okay. Looks really brassy, shiny now. I don't know why. It doesn't look as nice on camera. Let me try to put a little bit more gold on it. There we go. That's better. This was a little bit a little bit bright with the silver. Can we zoom slightly? How about that? Can I hold it closer to you? Is that better? Yep. Never. Don't ever um, be shy with the new cam setup and everything. You guys can ask me if you want a close up of something, and I can hold it closer. Right. It's weird being able to have so much room. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get some reds for the gems. There's gems here and there on these pieces. And I've got mayhem red and let's see. Let's do, um, this is ball, ball crimson. You're thinking of adding one of Sam lenses. Definitely. Sam, Sam is a great guy and a great teacher and a great painter. So I highly recommend. I would take Sam's class. I don't think I don't I don't think they added him until after I had signed up for all my classes. But I didn't get Sam. I didn't get Sam as a teacher. But I would. I would. Oligar777. Thank you. That was awesome of you to tip us. I really appreciate it. Yay, look at my little little tip jar jumping. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> All right, there's a little gem right here. This is the fantasy set. Oberon 067 or 086 is just subscribed. Thank you, Twitch Prime. Again, I want to thank you guys who are supporting my stream. We are improving. We're improving every every month by lately. It seems like, and every little bit that you guys chip in, it really does go back into the stream. And so I'm hoping that these these improvements are are uh, adding to your enjoyment. Uh oh, I need to get back on cam. Okay. And this is there's some gems over here, so I'm gonna paint. Ah, oh, the Bug King. <laughs> Ten months. You're pretty sure that means something. It does. It means that you're awesome. So the Bug King just subscribed, Mike. <laughs> and so did Talagar. Or, um, sorry. <laughs> oh, I blinked out. Um, Oberon just subscribed and then Taligar donated, so that was really nice. Getting these little gems cut, painted in here. And his... Got a whole bunch on, on his legs and on his armor right there. Okay. Making sure you guys can see everything. Okay, I don't, I don't see any more. A oh, bun bunch back here. I step away, and Hardy Wolf tries to troll me. What do he say? He says somebody's doing a class on streaming that I should go to. Oh, why is that trolling? Because he's doing it to tease me like I need to make the stream better. Oh, well, maybe he's being friendly. And no, he said, just messing with you, Mike. Oh. <laughs> hey, Jay Crod, 7776, how are you? All right, we got our little gems in. I'm probably going to go back in and pick out highlights at some point with these all right double check this yep that's got it all right i think we can start gluing some things on here 
Wait, I need to check my reference. Oh, here's something I didn't catch in the, uh, I'm going to use my detail brush from Red Grass Games and let's, let's see how it goes. This is a double zero. You can see this. We're going to use the red and all of this in here is red and there's a gem there too. probably should have painted this red to start and then dry brush the gold on top of the red so kind of doing a little reverse painting here which is fine later Amberden thank you so much Amberden had a great day at work an amazing day imagineering it in orientation took nine hours and then you had to do all the work you actually had to do afterward Woo, oh my goodness Oh man, I bet your brain is a little fried, huh? Or is that is that normal? Is that pretty far for the course to do that kind of thing for you? Alright, I, I give up. I'm going to go ahead and paint this whole thing red. It's going to be so much faster. I have, sometimes I have patience and sometimes I don't. And this is going to be much faster to just go in here and get this red down. Okay, I like that. And then this is a lighter red. We'll go ahead and paint that in as well. Today, I went and I substitute taught at, at a grade school for an art teacher who is a friend of mine. And it went pretty well, although I have to say that the kids are so ready to be done with school so they, they were a little bit chatty and that makes it sometimes hard to teach because they're not wanting to listen so much. But yeah, that was my day is substitute teaching. You guys see that? You started using red India ink for your reds? So saturated. Yeah, inks are. Genuine, thank you so much for the host. How are you? We are painting Rogel Dorn again. We're on part two of him. And it looks like to me that the studio is not as dry as it has been. So it's stuff is taking a little bit longer to dry, which is good. Nine months. Nine months. That's a baby is. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much, Genuine Vision. Guys, if you haven't followed Genuine, he is a fellow streamer and mate of the stream. Hold on, I just dropped my brush on the floor. I gotta grab it. <laughs> we should probably take a stretch break anyway. Okay, time for stretch. Everybody get out of your seat. Stand up. And Careful let's, with your microphone. Let's do a um, face cam. All right, everybody stretch, put your arms back, give yourself a little hug, kind of tilt your hips a little bit. Oh, I just cracked my back. <laughs> that feels good. All right. Orientation is not Star Wars land. Ah. Oh. All right, did you guys stretch? Come on, get out of your seat, do a stretch. <laughs> We've been, we've been sitting for an hour, so it's time. All right, back to the cam, the face cam. Let's look at this piece, I think, is not as, see how the difference between, oh, you gotta switch me, Mike. You're not paying attention. I got the look. <laughs> see the difference between the highlighted one and the non-highlighted one? There's a big difference. Um, so we're going to get, look at this, it's already drying out because this is just baking parchment. Let's see. Hopefully I can get my palette paper to work. Um, would you do me a huge favor, Mike? Would you go fill this up with water for me? I'm going to go get me some water. 
Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Got to keep it G-rated. <laughs> you do not like the pixie dust? What's the pixie dust, uh, Bug King? You got to tell me. What is that all about? Do you throw it on people? This is a little bit of this bright gold right here. I'm gonna pick out, pick out my highlights now. Ooh, I like that right there on the Roman numerals. And I just realized there's a gem up there too, right there. And there's one right there. It's the Disney magic. How can you not like it if it's the magic? Oh, thank you so much. All right, I'm gonna add water to my sponge here. There we go. Like I said, if this were the actual Redgrass Games um, membrane, we wouldn't be having this problem. We're having this problem because I'm using just basic ba uh, baking parchment and it's not as good. Not even close. So, I'm looking forward to getting all, I ordered so many sheets of uh, the, the Kickstarter membrane so that I'll be able to have it. Okay, there we go. I'm staying away from that little red gem right there. All right, so are we getting closer? A little bit. Let's do a little bit more silver, and I'm gonna mix, try mixing silver and gold together right here. We get a lighter color with one step instead of two. There we go. Pretty silvery, so we're gonna go back over it with the regular gold again. And maybe even a little bit of this Viking. That's what, there we go. Yeah. A little bit of the Viking. Let's look at them. Did I know that the Bug King is working on the new Star Wars Land at Disney? No, I didn't. That's amazing. Oh my goodness. I need intel. Mike wants to go to the hotel, the one that where you get to have like a Star Wars character. Um, and so that that is actually something we've been talking about a little bit. These reds up here, these little gems. A little bit of this red too. So I need, I'm going to use the corn red because it's a little bit more opaque. It's a little bit more, not as thin. It's also not as red. I just realized I need a really, let me try this. This is Scarlet Red by Model, Model Air. Sometimes it's a very orangey red. That's okay. We can do that. We can do orangey red, especially if the orangey red is on top of a scarlet like a darker scarlet color. See? It shows up really well. Yeah. Corn red is nice. Um, also, the uh, metallics from GW are pretty nice as well. Let's do this as the dark ruby built. Yep, the hotel will be amazing. The land will be awesome. The technology is cool. Oh, that sounds so cool. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, it definitely sounds cool. Kidani Village or Animal Kingdom Lodge? Oh, you can't tell me anything more than that? That's fine.
Also, get reservations at Tiffin's. It's so good. Did I back that paintbrush Kickstarter? Edifo, I didn't. Because um, I'm currently getting... I'm sponsored by Redgrass Games. They just sent me some paintbrushes. I really like... Um, what is it? Um, I really like the paintbrushes from uh, Spellcrow. And so, to be honest, they, they did not contact me. And so I did not... Did not back it um, because I have so many other possibilities for brushes right now. Now I am going to wait and see how that Kickstarter gets. I've, I'm very careful with my Kickstarters. I've been burned. So I want to make sure that, you know, the company is legit and everything they're going to fund and they're going to, you know, send out the right amount of stuff to the people who backed. Just never know, so it's always better to wait and see if you if you don't know for sure. Okay, a little bit of corn red on the top of that. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. That's pretty. I like that. Now, this is not dry, so I'm gonna let that be. Get a little bit more. I Missing some corn red on some of the gems. Did uh, Eric, or sorry, Edifo, did you back the Kickstarter? Now I'm curious if anybody here got in on that paintbrush Kickstarter or not. And if so, was it, what was it that made you interested in them and what made you think that they'll be good? Cause that's the other thing I've 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 tried paintbrushes from companies, and I'm not going to name names, but they've been kind of mm, not so great. So uh, that's the other reason why I'm being careful. The Artist Opus one. Did you back that, Jan? Yeah, that's the one that we're talking about. I have not backed it. So you're looking at it. Oh, okay. Relix thought about it, but passed. Price is good and all, but they'll be close to the same price when they launch. And if they come to market, you'll try them then. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I was thinking, Grelix. So I was like, you know, it's it's not that big of a discount to. I mean, I again, I have to think of stuff from a business angle, and not just back stuff because it's cool. But back stuff because it makes us a good business decision for me. There's this gold up here. I like, ooh, pretty. I totally forgot to highlight this little crown thing. And I'm missing, I'm going to go ahead and go in here with the detail brush and completely pick out all of this filigree for you guys on cam. It's very small and very detailed. But what's nice, it's raised enough. Is it on cam, Mike? Yes. Okay, good. It's raised enough that I can catch it off pretty easily and pretty quickly. I'm going to go ahead and color this whole little circle thing here. And let's go back to this. Um, he's got like a breech clout deal right here. I'm going to hit all these little lightning bolts that are on here. I can't put his arm on until all that's done. Because I won't be able to reach it if I do. And this beautiful Roman numeral stuff over here. Let me know if you need me to turn this, Mike. Probably. Yeah, I can see so much better, guys. And not only that, 
with these brushes, this this double zero red grass games brush is holding a good tip and I'm getting some nice detail work done here. Go ahead and put a little bit of the bright gold on the highlighted parts. All right, I see there's a whole border back here that needs to be painted gold. So the only oddity is they use Game Workshop naming the explanation. Say that again? The only oddity is they use the Games Workshop dimensions 1000. Oh, interesting. Yeah, every brush company, I mean, they really don't have to standardize. Um, who was it? Um, Mini Painter Inc. and I were looking at the new brushes, the new long wick brushes from Slow Fuse. And he, um, they were a little bit can't remember if they were, I think they were a little bit bigger than Windsor Newton's. They weren't quite, or either that, or maybe they were smaller. I can't, I can't remember now. They were just a little bit different in size. That's the thing about, you know, if you're a private company, you can actually have your own size standard. So it doesn't, doesn't necessarily match. If a two is from one company, that doesn't mean it's the same as the two from another company, kind of like women's shoes. <laughs> what? <laughs> women's clothing and women's shoes, they vary so much, especially um, pant sizes and dress sizes. <clears throat> Pardon me, I got, can you shut my mic off? about that guys there's no way to mute myself is there when I'm oh I guess I have my little keypad when I when I'm on by myself yeah. check this out this this has been keeping its point the entire time which makes me really happy you're gonna have to mute me again I've got a little, another little frog So sorry guys for coughing, but thankfully I'm not coughing in your ears. All right, a little bit of silver, a little bit of gold. Mix them together to get my lovely bright gold highlight here. And I'm kind of taking it down the middle of this boot so that I get the maximum amount of contrast. Same thing right here. See that? So we get the maximum brightness of gold. All right. Look at how metal he looks. He looks metal. So metal. <laughs> now, can I can I glue the arm on? I believe I can. I'm gonna do that. Harry Wolf wants to know if the basement's cat free. It is, and I'm so happy about that. It's made a huge difference. All right. A little bit of glue. Here's his arm. I'm gonna make sure put his hand right over the wait, I gotta put it in the right spot. There we go. Might need a little bondic in there. Hmm. There we go. Right there. I gotta hold it. I don't have this this glue is super old, so it may take a minute or two to cure. Let me read chat while we're holding glue. Hold the glue. Hold the glue. So is basement still cat free? Yes. I'm waiting on my wet palette from Red Grass Games. How am I liking? I love it. Like I said before, this is baking parchment, not their actual membrane. I used up all the membranes 
because that is how much I love this palette. And Edifo, that I also got sponsorship from them. So that's why we're showing off these new Red, Gas, Red Grass Games brushes. And also, if you come to my classes at Gen Con, Nova, and Marcon, I don't know for sure if I'll have them by Marcon, but I'm gonna try. But if I have them, we'll be having palettes for my two painting classes, which will be amazing. This is the small palette, so this is not the studio size palette. Bob Smith Industries is your favorite best glue you've used. Verve with Swerve, I've never heard of that. That sounds cool. I might have to check that out. I did get a new super glue. One of the guys from Nova is, he's like kind of a chemical, like safety guy. And he told me that super glue, some people are sensitive to it. So he wasn't sure that I should bring regular super glue. Bug King probably knows something about this. And he sent me this product, Mercury. It's a, it's a different brand of super glue um that doesn't smell it's amazing okay we're getting ready here to glue on the shoulder pad i'm gonna just scratch this because it's got primer on it and want it to stick really well so here we go scratch all the paint off of the spot you want to stick size is your palette? I said it was a, a oh, small sorry. size, yep. Scratch, 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 here we go. Okay, time to glue, glue, glue. That's probably a little bit more than I need. This is the correct shoulder pad right here. Mm. It fits right into a little socket, there we go right on the shoulder. Not as good adhesion, but in longer cure times, but it works. Yes, oh, and okay. Cosmos BC, good evening. Cosmos BC, how are you? How is the weather in Canada right now? Oh, this is not sticking at all, hold on. Okay, let's try. Maybe you have to probably, it's probably because it's got so much paint on it. No. I might have to get a little bit of this Insta set and just put a drop in there to keep it from. Wait a second. I just noticed a huge gap under his arm. We might have to fill that too. There we go. That glue you're using is now Bob Smith Industries. Oh. Oh, this is Bob Smith Industries? Okay. That's pretty cool to know. All right. Let's go ahead and fill with the Bondic. Bondic is life. Let's find my little Bondic tubes are all missing. Where are they? I'm looking. Here it is. There we go. And I've got my handy dandy light right here. I'm gonna fill this gap. Now, anywhere there, there wasn't any super glue. There we go. And then that, you can see that is shining the UV light on it, hopefully curing it within four seconds. I should put it down here. It is time for Bondic. <laughs> That's your preferred type as well. Thought you were using the actual marketed no fumes version. No, I'll show you. Hang on one second, let me. So this did go into the gap a little bit, so we need a little bit more. There's a big, big gap. There we go. Da -da -da. 
Mike, if you would do me a favor and go grab the super glue out of the fridge. Which fridge? Little mini fridge. And it is in a, it's like in a, there's two super glues that are in there, but one of them has a, like a yellow label. I think that it's gonna be good. I like him. He looks good. He looks very space marine right now. Okay, this is what I got for my, it's called Mercury Adhesives, M100F, the purest premium adhesive, foam safe medium, which I'm not sure what that means. And it's made in the US. It is cyan, cyan acrylate. I think that's how I say it. But it does not smell. And you, it's, let me see something. Let me smell it. I'm gonna sniff glue on camera, but not, yeah, it doesn't smell at all. It's, it's much safer, I think, than the other stuff I have. And I'm keeping it in the fridge so that it'll last a little longer. Let's see how it works compared to the other stuff that I have, the Instacure. Yeah, that's the stuff you were talking about. Oh, okay. And you said that you like it? Is it good stuff? I spent a lot on it. It was kind of expensive. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it wasn't it wasn't cheap. But I have to have it for the class because they don't want me to use regular super glue in the class, which I will respect. I don't want anybody to get sensitivities from super glue. There you go. Before I paint, before I, let me just check. I'm gonna dry fit this. Okay, good. I was worried that this was gonna be so close to his face that I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to, um, wouldn't be able to fit it in there. Let's try this new stuff. That stuff is the best you found. Oh, the purple label, yeah. This is really good. I also like um, Loctite Pro. That's my personal go-to. So here we go with the new stuff. Put this on. It's gonna hold, it's gonna hold, holy cow. It's a little wiggly, so we need to hold it a little longer. Cyan Oacrylate. Oacrylate. Cyan Oacrylate. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I just, CA, that'll do. Thank you, Jan. I like that CA, CA glue. Okay, broke a torn. Almost ready, look at that. Now what do we gotta do? We gotta paint his face. And we also have to put his backpack on, but that can wait because we have a cloak to paint before that. Here's the cloak. I started painting it, it's not done. There's lots of little sticky details that need to be finished. So the only downside to this foam is that it comes off a little bit and then it gets dust on stuff. So you wanna not touch the foam too much. All right, let's look. All right, I'm gonna paint some face. We're gonna, I'm gonna use the green, my green technique on him. I think it'll look good. So oh, I need to look for an olive green in my colors. This is good. Field gray, that's pretty olive. Let's see if I've got something a little closer. Mm. Hmm. Well, you can mix an olive. Let's do that. Let me show you guys how to mix an olive green. Cause this is a little too blue for what I wanna do. So we're gonna take Iroko, which is a already very ochery yellow. And we're gonna mix a tiny bit of deep blue with it. Tiny bit. I mean, it's like 
Like barely any. Not that color. Where's the deep blue? Here it is. It has a little bit. There we go. Just a smidge. And it's better to just add a little bit at a time. See that? It's already starting to get more olive. A little bit more. That is perfect. It's a very neutral, neutral green. And it's nice and light. We're going to paint his whole face with this color. Ooh, not the, not the shoulder pads. Full strength is around 48 hours, not the usual. Wow. Yeah, I think for me, I like stuff to cure a little faster, even though it might not be as tough of a bond. I don't know. I'm just impatient, I think. Must be cured now. Paint up a little bit into his hair. And you'll see when we put in the, um, when we put the hair in, you'll see why. And don't forget his neck. That's it. That's the entirety. Wait, back here behind his ear as well. Because he does have sort of some double going on on his face and on his, or sorry, not on his face, on his side of his sideburns. I'm going to just take a peek at my reference. He has white hair. Oh, okay. That's going to be fun. Is that right? So does anybody have any uh, any ideas? Is that right? Is his hair white or is it gray? Put this back on. Let's do a little bit more detailing up here in the gold. And then just to clean up that little gem right there. And then some of this red needs to get cleaned up. Yeah. It is white in the parody I saw. It's white. Okay, we're gonna do it white then. I'm gonna start out with a gray, which is gonna be graphite. And then we'll lighten it up to white. Probably, yeah, we'll lighten it up to white. So he's, I'm going to leave in all of the dark areas that are already there. Mostly. So he's got some shadow and, and definition. Am I on cam? Yeah. You move a little bit to the left, but. Okay. Here? Yeah. Yeah, doesn't. Yeah. And I'm going to show you a trick. With the scale 75s, we can do a really cool looking white on his hair with the speed metal. You'll see. I'm going to show you. Okay. He got his hair all painted now. Hold on, let me get the speed metal out. Here it is. It's a very, very, very white. It's almost like a white and it will look really good in his hair. I need to shake this more though. Put this on the palette. Do that. It's so finely pigmented. We can mix it with some white to make a really beautiful hair. Okay. So a little bit of speed metal, a little bit of white. Get sort of a pearlescent white. You won't even notice the difference here. I prefer it'll look really natural looking. Pull that cat hair out. Cat hair. Yeah, we got one.
I'm just trying to grab the highlights of texture that's on here's hair right here. Hey. It's white in the parody saw also in the box art. Yeah, that's true. Okay. We're going to give it a little bit more white. White white on the sides cuz I feel like it'll look even cooler. A bit on the top here. It looks good. Okay. Now we're going to get into our flesh tones. Um, I think I will start with like rosy shadow from Reaper Master Series. It's got, I just like it because it's nice and dark and it's good, especially for male skin. Because it can, you can be start out so ruddy. All right, glasses are off. Let's get in here and see if I can paint this, all these tiny little details. So oh, it's as if, and you might need a different brush. Let me get my Red Grass Games brush. Because that other brush was more of a dry brush. All right, here we go. I'm highlighting all my green with this, with this Reaper Master color. And I want to, he's got such detailed features we we'll keep a little bubble of water. It's gonna glaze quite a bit here. Into the hair. A little bit into the hair. Tiny, tiny, tiny features. Do you have me actual metallic alchemy white in the middle? Yes. Go ahead and paint each little furrow in his eyebrows. And again, into the hair a little bit. And on the cheekbones. Notice the spots that I'm leaving green. It's the spots like the hollows of the eyes the underside of the nose, the sides of the nose. I want to leave all that. Chin gets a nice rosy highlight. And then he's got these folds by his, um, by the sides of his mouth. I'm gonna do a little glaze quick right here. See that? I don't know if you guys can see that, but it already looks like he's starting to get some depth. That's the first layer. Now I'm going to give it just a tiny bit of red and I'm going to paint like places like the ends of his nose. It's just a teeny, teeny amount of red. And I mix it with my flesh tone too. I'm going to put it on cheekbones. Like I said, the end of his nose. Very, very faint. His lips. A little bit on his temple here, up on the top of his temple. Okay. Now, I am going to use, hmm, I think I need another layer of the rosy because it's a little too green. I 
think she ordered food. Okay. Make sure to get that. He's got like little tiny eyelids too. Holy cow. This is awesome, guys, because this is the most detail that I have ever been able to paint on stream. So you guys are responsible for this because you've helped me pay for things for the stream. I've been able to improve it to the point where now, now you can see me point, paint high detail. All right, now we need, we need a contrast. So I'm going to use a little bit of Reichland flesh shade. Where's my glasses? Does anybody have any questions so far? First layer, or as you call it, done. <laughs> now, now you know some different ways here. Okay, I'm looking for, let's see. I don't have my Reichland flesh shade handy, but what I do have is the old school Citadel flesh wash, which is in some ways is a little better. And I'm just gonna put a drop of this on my palette because this stuff is strong. Straight up ink is what it is. And again, look at that, my red grist. I'm so happy with these brushes. Really nice, straight point. The bigger brush has a little bit of a harder time carrying a point. But I think if they made it just a smidge shorter that they'd be, they'd be on, on point. On point, ah. Uh. All right, I'm going to paint insides of his eye sockets. They're so small. There we go. Let's get the corners of his mouth. I can't remember what the names of these folds are that are... Oh, to left, rather. Left to the left. And down. A little bit dark, but and a little bit under the in there. Now make sure to go back and lighten it up. Another one of the eyeballs. Now. This is where I take a watered down bit of the ink and I, I go ahead and run it over his forehead because I need the shadows of his scowl. And we will highlight that. So this ink, it's gonna blend in with this green. Oh, that's a little bit heavy, so we're gonna that off there we go I'm gonna blend in with that green and give us a real nice warm tone for the shadows okay now we go back with our base coat with our our rosy let me know if you have questions now's the time Key highlight. Lime, just rated with 46. Whoa, thank you so much, Key Lime Prime. Guys, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Painting some Rogaldorn. We're getting details on faces. Look at the Raiders. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Also, if anybody here hasn't followed Key Lime Prime, give him a follow. We're off and on at the same time, but I sometimes raid him back so it's great to have everybody here all right now i'm gonna need like a pastel yellow let's see if i can find pastel yellow in my here we go this one's good it is fantasy and sick it's called high key yellow 
We'll also need a turquoise, a little bit of a turquoise. Okay, I'll put this on. I'm using the Redgrass Games palette. It's the prototype. How are you, Key Lime? <laughs> Perfect person to talk about your Custodes jet bike project. You're basically using the same colors. Yeah, feel free to ask any questions you need, Intense Pickle. Thorn. You'd love to stay, but you ended early because you're feeling kind of groggy and awful. Okay, take care, Key Lime. Get some rest. Get rest, yes. I'm using the yellow to highlight now. And I, I gotta take glasses off because I can't, I can't see otherwise. Down. Down here. Okay. And I'm also got a new camera situation going on, so we're not, we're not used to placement quite yet. But it's a good camera situation. This is not the good brush. That's why I was like having trouble. Here we go. Good brush. I'm going to have to go back in with my red and brighten it up because he looks a little yellow. Now, somebody tell me the story behind the Primarchs. I think they're like, like why are some of them kind of dead looking? I think like Chorus, he's always kind of, but he's, He's flipped, and I'm pretty sure Rogaldorn's a good guy, right? Like, sort of a good guy? He's like one of the last of them? I don't know the lore. Intense Pickle's main issue will be getting the metallic effect right, seeing as how he has little brush time under his belt, wants to shoot for a burnt bronze, almost ancient Greek look. Okay. So um, you need to go back and watch the first VOD that I did of this guy. And instead of picking out the silver, just go up to, um, go up to that first light, but use that base brown. That will really help set the tone. And then I would use just a different highlight color. Maybe use one with a little bit more, this one is a Viking gold, that one's more gold. But this Victorian brass might be good. It's got a lot more kind of bronzy color in it. The Tim Fizz says that half of them were corrupted by chaos or something like that. Dorn is a oh. good guy. Um, Quote unquote. <laughs> yeah. Tim Fizz says, or Cosmos says that Dorn's okay. He's Maybe okay. okay. Uh, Fistinatilu says loves the metal workup. Ah, uh, thanks. And Intense Pickle says that Robo Dorn is like the poster child for the Imperium. Okay. I'm, I put a little too much red in his cheeks, and now he looks all jolly. We're gonna we're gonna take it down a little bit with the re regular. So Rosa. Key Lime says that more so that Horus was swayed by Erebus and convinced the Emperor was the liar, not the true leader of the Imperium. Half the Primarchs followed him due to them trusting him more than the emperor. Okay. That was like the bi the bigger corruption, wasn't it? Okay, do you guys see how I put the yellow down? And then I got a little bit of the rosy tan the where's my color go? This one. Rosy Shadow by Reaper Master Series and I'm going over the yellow with it to help it a little bit. We're at the end of the time, but do you want to go another 15 minutes since we got all these? Yeah, absolutely. Folks? We're going to at least finish his face. Now. Restart the music. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of this white. And actually, no, don't use white on eyeballs. Use off-white. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of this pale skin. It's got just enough ink in it that it won't read. It'll still read as white. So remember the seventy that seventy show? Yes. Intense pickle it says that Rogaldorn is basically red from from that the dad. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. He's one of my favorites then. Somebody just subscribe. Yep, oh, no, follow. No, follow Unleash Hell Five. Thanks Unleash for the Hell follow. Five, thank you so much for the welcome to the class. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting I'm gonna get these eyes here. 
Now, unfortunately, I think they're really small. So you got to think about it like this. If you are in a football field, are you going to be able to see the, 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 the colors of somebody's eyes? No. We're just going to do this dark color right here, which is sort of like the deep blue. And we'll just give him enough of a, a gaze. Well, he looks pretty serious now. And now I'm going to go in with this light, light color and highlight the underlying, the under, got little eyelids down here. Thanks for the follow, official Ray Long. Yes. Official Ray Long, thank you so much. Welcome. Mel Mel Melty Mortal says that it looks like a lot has happened since last saw Mr. Dorn. Oh, yes. Hey. That's the one we just mentioned. Mel Melty? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Ray Long. All right, I'm going to go ahead and paint his little eyebrows here. He's got white eyebrows. We did, so you guys missed, because you just showed up, we put a little bit of this Speedball Metallic from Scale 75 in his hair, and it's given it, it's given it a very natural looking sheen of a silver gray, white kind of look. Here we go. I'm really happy with his hair. Oops. Serious as he should be, Dorn does not do humor. No, he looks serious. I somebody linked me the little cartoon. There's a couple cartoons that are make fun of Warhammer that are really funny, and I got to see the one with him in it. It's great. Thanks for the follow, LB noobs. Yes. Now the final highlight of just the white on the tips of his hair. The long-standing theory in 40k is that the Tyranids are the only good guys because they behave really? purely on instinct. Oh, interesting. Oh. Official Ray Long says, spoken to that, it says, spoken like a Xenos heretic scum, we should party. <laughs> so that's the thing, like, neither neither you nor me knows really anything about 40k lore. I know, so I know like, what a Tyranid is. Okay. Those are the bugs, aren't they? No, mm, they're kind of, no, I'm thinking of Tau. Yeah, the Tyranids are the bugs. What about um, those one dudes, the Necrons? Those are, those are, they're not instinct, but they are definitely kind of single-minded, right? Are the, I wouldn't say they're good guys at all, though. I think the Necrons are supposed to be kind of Borg-like, maybe? All right, I think that is it for Rogel. Okay, let's do this. Let's do the backpack. No, wait, you gotta get the cloak. Cloak of redness. The Necrons are jerks. Necrons are jerks. According to Cosmos. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. Ray Long says Necrons are space skeleton Terminator pharaohs. <laughs> oh. So I'm just brushing a little bit of this red. Um. Lots of glazes on this red to get it up to this. I started out with this brown color and we went up to this red, which was kind of crazy. And I am I wanted a lot of contrast and that's how you do it. You have to get in there with the brown first. I want that to be a little bit, see? Okay, so here's how it started. We started with the brown and this is sort of the intermediary and this is what happens when you put the reds on slowly. I'm going to put glasses on for this. Glasses on. Kind of neutral in a kill everyone equally kind of way. Yeah. So I have. Oh, no. What was that? <laughs> uh, luckily, I spilled, but I spilled into my palette and not on Rogel Dorn. Oh, that would be bad. No, but I'm going to get this. There we go. So. It's now it's really everlasting. <laughs> Luckily, I have a, a dry palette over here to, to save the day. So I'm going to set this one aside. 
over here. There we go. Dry palette time. <laughs> yeah, dropped his right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get out my good red. Where is it? Do, do, do. This one is Antares red, but I've got a redder red than that. This one. See the difference? No, you can't. This one's more orange. This one's more red. Antares red goes in the palette. That works. And we will layer this up. See? I got it. It's not quite a dry brush effect, but because I'm, I'm feathering it. Usually your cat who does that spills stuff to spite you while you're painting. We, we used to have four cats. Now we're down to two and we also moved our studio. We moved houses actually. And now the studio is cat free, cat free zone. And I have to, I have to tell you, it's been pretty nice. See this? Um, if, I, if I dry brush just ever so slightly, we catch those little folds that, that Forge World likes to put into the, into the creases of the cloak, which I love. So. There we go. It's layering nice now. And what I will end up doing is doing another glaze of a deeper red on top of this. Because this is pretty orangey, but it's nice because that that orangey red is actually what we need for our base to get the red red to look so saturated. See there? Okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Let it dry. Don't go over too much or you'll get a hole. Sometimes I can paint a little hole in my paint by rubbing it off while it's trying to cure. Okay, so same thing over here. Same doodads. This is the quick way. By the way, um, one of the things that you might like about the stream, I think it was Pickle, I can't remember who asked. Oh, you have a scorpion? She don't care enough to interfere with your ho hobbying. Oh my gosh. I, yeah. Don't let the scorpion walk around your studio. <laughs> he has a scorpion, Mike. Mike's not paying attention. Mike's gaming on his phone. No, I'm not gaming. <laughs> That got his extension. <laughs> uh, see? This is my fast way. It's 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 not dry brushing because the brush is not dry. But it is feathering. We are feathering. And I'm going to go over this gold because I'm going to go back over the gold after I get I get my hand in this puddle over here. All right. Let's... I need my deep red, this crimson. Aster purple. It's It's got a nice... Oh yeah, that's going to be nice. Watch this. So we've got that orangey red. Now we put this... It's very thin because this is the fantasy and games over the top of... Our scale color, which is translucent over opaque. And see that? And the... Oh, I love it. It kind of um, blends it for me, too. It's, it's literally the cheaty fast way to do red.
Key to scorpion ownership. One, have a vet girlfriend. Two, keep anti-venom in your pocket. Yes. That sounds like a plan. Did the, uh, did the vet girlfriend, was she the one who brought the scorpion home? Or did you pick it and she's like, okay, cool. I could, I couldn't live in the Southwest only because scorpions are just kind of common house pests and I would not be able to deal with that. Okay, watch this. This is that beautiful scarlet over the top of that orangey. See that? Now thin out this part so it goes into the brown. Okay. What do you think, Mike? Pretty cool. Yay! Yeah, Ray, this is custom music that Shoshi had commissioned for, yeah. for um, our stream. If you, if you are a streamer and you want to get your own music, I recommend, you know, obviously you might want a few more loops than I have. I, I'm planning on getting some more. But this guy is out of the UK and it was a hundred pounds to get my own theme song, which you can hear at the beginning of my streams, and a hun another hundred pounds for a, tw a sorry, a 30 minute loop of, uh, of music, which I'm pretty happy with. All right. Here we go. I want everything to be sort of satin. There we go. Boom. Boom. See how the satin, it just lays over that matte color and it just looks beautiful quickly. Oh, there's a nice big piece of lint here. Lint. There we go, I got it. And if you want to go a little bit more, more contrasty, get back there with that orange. Look at that. But feather it. Feather, 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 feather. It dries, it dries a little quicker than the other, than the satin. See? Try highlighting red with orange. With the orangey red. And it will look it will look pretty. There we go. Boom. I think that's almost done. So I'm gonna put this on him. Oh, I got some stickers. I think. Hold on one second. I'm gonna take my mic off and find these. Hold on one second. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there. So, in this picture, I can see there's a decal. You know that somebody did not freehand that. Now, the question is, is one of these gonna work for that. Is it this one? Can you guys see? Oh, this is terrible. There. Is that gonna work? Kind of looks like. Somebody tell me if I'm, if I put the wrong one on, they will slay me online. Dead. Doesn't look the same. It looks a little different. You so. want to research it offline or? Maybe. Or after. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up and find somebody to host. And bases and bases, we are gonna host them. These guys, okay, I know you guys are mostly Warhammer people, but Dallas is faces and bases, and he is the head studio painter for Privateer Press. He's a really, really good painter. So we're going to host him. You guys, you'll like him too. 
Um, real quick, I want to tell you, come back and watch me on Friday from 2.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon on um, Central Time, which is GMT minus 6, right? And bases. And what else? Keep an eye on my Facebook page because we're going to have some announcements about some different conventions. And I'm going to be doing that giveaway of the Adepticon swag bag. So tell your friends or keep it secret so they don't enter so that you can win. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Whichever you like. All right, go ahead and... Ray Long says the decal is the eagle, by the way. Yay, thank you. Give him five points. Ow. Yay, it is the eagle. Okay. Good, it's this one right here, but it's, it's, a, it's a black version. Okay. All right, thank you, Graylong. You guys have a good time. And wait, there we go. You gotta flip it, Mike, you got me on. There we go. Okay. All right, have a good time, guys. We'll see you on Friday.